Hello, wonderful people. Connor Whitmore here again with another video for you on the Naughty Step channel. And today I'm going to be doing a live review of the new compilation from 1985 Music, Atlas One. This is the latest compilation from Alex Perez owned at 1985 Music, one of my favourite labels at the moment, no question, no doubt, and one of the most consistently fantastic quality wise when it comes to both ideas and production. And yeah, just enjoyed their stuff so much last couple of years that I kind of made myself a bit of a promise, if you will, uh, not that long ago, that with the release of their next compilation, I promised myself that, yeah, I'm going to cover them on the channel. I just really want to. And uh, yeah, nice to kind of cover something a little different on the channel. So I hope it's worth it, this video. Hope you enjoy it. Hope you're liking the tunage that I'm going to be live reviewing right here. 12 tracks and a load of household 1985 names in the track list right here. I just had a look at it. It's fire. Let's go. Hearing them all for the first time. Going to provide comment along the way. You know how we do. By now, let's go. First up, we have Scars by Deft. Production. I mean, come on, absolute joke. <laughs> it's just so immersive, man, so atmospheric. Like, I just feel like I'm getting lost in it. The soundscape of the whole track, like, it's just. I feel like I'm on a vast plane just looking out. Damn, what a beautiful opening, like a lot of scope to it, just felt very atmospheric, immersive and it had a sense of story to it. And beyond that, the production being incredible and, uh, you know, it had those little catchy moments in it as well. You know, as it went on, there were little bits where you felt like, you know, you could just kind of get used to those little catchy touches and kind of snippets, if you will. Those little bits of percussion that did it, do did. Amazing soundscape kind of music, incredible production, a sense of story to it and not really putting a foot wrong when it comes to the, yeah, just the overall makeup and arrangement of the track. The idea is, you know, doing just about enough to keep you really engaged, but no, it's a production and the sense of story, the little motif that we get throughout that uh, really does lock you in here. Yeah, I mean, not really putting a foot wrong, if I'm being honest, and again, just showing for the most part what 1985 is about, you know, stylistically, production-wise as well, so a good way to kick off here. Very, very good, and uh, a tough act to follow, that one from Deft. Good stuff. Next up, we have Crux by Headland. Got a little bit of an uneasy feel to it, you know? It feels a bit indecisive, perhaps, in the direction it's going off in. It has a bit of a, just a bit of a queasy feeling lying underneath here, like it's not, you know, just feeling a bit uncertain, not quite sure what it's going for. Snares are a joke, unbelievable, just so defined, clean on the ear. Okay. Yeah, I mean, another where the production is incredible, got a very dark and serious feel to it again. And I think the kind of the horn sounds, the brass sounds that we got uh, laced throughout did a very good job of embellishing that serious dark feel, gave it a bit of a, a bit of a brooding, uh, quite impending feel, you know, when you're hearing it. The idea is just feeling a bit, uh, just a little bit indecisive and not quite presenting anything here for me that I felt I could get into or that I could remember and go back to and kind of, 
Just, just stuff that would make the track memorable, if you know what I mean. It just felt a bit indecisive with its direction on the, the concept front, if you will. Did enjoy the outlay of percussion that we got, and with the production being so good, every little sound you can hear really clearly, and it's just got a very sharp and, you know, just a sheen to it, if you know what I mean. Just really clean and clear on the air. But yeah, the idea itself just feeling a bit scattered and not really with something, I suppose, shining through like a proper idea a proper concept, just not a lot here to get into. If we're gonna compare, if we're gonna be picking favorites from this compilation, then I imagine it'll boil down to which ones just have the most infectious ideas and the most kind of memorable appeal and factor to them because the production throughout this thing is gonna be incredible. Like that's just a bit of a given. So yeah, decent, but not wowing me. Then we have Drone with Fool's Gold. Okay. <laughs> Get out, you're too good. Get out. The production is just, again, I can't help but say it's a joke, like in the best way. It's a joke, I can't comprehend it. The attention to detail here, the management of timing and space, like, Masterful. Bit of a rhythmy feel to it, you know? Just got that. Damity dam 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 Daniel. Basically, if you're able to appreciate just amazing production for what it is, then music like that you're just gonna fall in love with straight away. Do you know what I mean? It's not a tune for, you know, outlandish or out there ideas in any way whatsoever. It does kind of mutate and evolve in a way. As it goes on, we had that kind of spirally winding section in the middle, which I personally wasn't a massive fan of, but it did show a bit of a mutation, a bit of an evolution on what we got in the beginning. Uh, but yeah, I mean, for me, it's just about getting lost in the production itself. Feeling like I'm in a kind of cavernous space, all the sounds rebounding off one another, no escape, and just feeling, you know, penned in by this completely this completely vacuous sound that's just engulfing you time and again over and over. When the production is so good that the track kind of feels like it's a, a separate entity, if you will, right in front of you, that's when you know. That's when you know when it feels so real that it feels like it's right in front of you and that's what we got right there. Maybe aside from that middle winding bit, which I wasn't massive on, aside from that, it's another one where I can't find much fault with it if any. So uh, yeah, another very subtly powerful tune, incredible production, solid ideas, and the progression of it overall just being insane for me. Uh, yeah, you know, production, fucking production, top notch. Then we have Nibiru by Visages, okay. I can feel it. Give it to me. Oh! Stop! <laughs> oh! Oh my God! Listen to that fucking sermon! Oh! Oh fucking hell, man! I'm gonna cry. It just sounds so fucking good. Come on! Listen to that sound, man. Listen to it. First track as well here with a bit of attitude, you know, like really presenting itself very forthright with the idea, aggressive, just knows what it's good for, solid, sharp, Urgh, just angry, I fucking love it. <laughs> Mellowing it out a little bit, toning the track down, not quite as full on, just a bit more, yeah, a bit more laid back, a bit more chilled. 
Still got the meanness, you know, lying below. Uh, quite devilish still, but yeah, definitely more, more toned down. Yeah, the first one here with a proper attitude, this one. In the first half in particular, that do, 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 do. I mean, honestly, that is one of those where I'm just like, I can't quite get or comprehend how that wouldn't get you going, how that wouldn't fire you up. I think the second half, I initially didn't enjoy quite as much as the first half, that kind of toning down that we got. Uh, just felt a bit more mellow and just a bit underwhelming in comparison. That was initially, but I think as it goes on and you get used to that mellow approach, kind of toning it down a bit, I think, yeah, I, I think there's room for just getting used to it and its place within the tune as uh, as you hear it again and again, which is definitely what I'm gonna be doing with that tune. I do definitely appreciate its space in the tune, that second half, but it does definitely pale in comparison with the first half, how statement making it is, and just how, yeah, attention grabbing, alarming it is. It's just so good. Probably my pick here so far, just for that first half alone, you know, such an aggression to it. So full on, knows what it's good for, a load of personality and attitude to it. Really loving that one right there from Visages, top stuff. Moving on, we have Clarity by Echo Brown. Could this be the first D&B number on compilation? Okay. Kind of like the headland, but of course in a completely different way. It just feels a bit uncertain, a bit unsure of itself in terms of the tone of it, if you know what I mean. But still, I mean the production. Listen to it. Fucking listen to that production. Yeah, just there. Like the first drop. Can you hear what I mean? Just a little bit uneasy, a little bit odd with the, the choice of tone there. The feathery percussion that we got, very dainty and uh, yeah, just so tricksy and intricate and very well done on that front. And there were moments, uh, to be fair, where as each drop goes on, the feeling you can kind of get lost in it and you can appreciate it a bit more. And yeah, just allow that soothing, blissful feel of it to really kind of course through your body. It's just those initial hits for me with each drop that we get, the two main drops. Uh, yeah, they just feel a bit weird, a little bit odd for me in terms of the tone that they're going for. Doesn't feel like it's quite decisive enough on that front. Doesn't have quite enough of a sure or an assured feeling behind it, I don't think. Uh, but yeah, that would be my drawback, my main drawback with that one, because again, so much good here that we get uh, across the tune. Uh, but yeah, those main points just maybe bringing it down for me just a little bit. Uh, but yeah, that would be my thoughts on uh, that one. Moving on, we have the man himself, Alex Perez, with blank pages. Okay, uh, let's go. Yeah, so far this one, I mean, just fine to me. Uh, you know, got a nice uh, kind of combination between the instrumental and vocal uh, through the heaviness that we got. But I mean, not something that I feel like I'm wowed by or anything like that. You know, again, production, of course, very good. But the idea, you know, it's just fine. Just okay, not really doing very much. Weirdly enough, the bass in that drop almost felt like it was too much at the forefront. I wonder if we'll get that again here. Yeah, I mean, it's quite, it's quite loud in the mix, in that heaviness, do you know what I mean? Like, maybe it's just me, but that's what I'm hearing anyway. For me, that one just fine, nothing particularly noteworthy about it, I would have to say. A, a pleasant uh, combination between vocal and instrumental, as I mentioned earlier. Again, the production very good and the progression of it uh, seamless as always with Alex Perez and his music. But yeah, nothing uh, nothing out there, nothing special or nothing all that memorable if I'm being honest with, uh, with the ideas we got there. Pretty laid back, pretty stripped back uh, D&B number 
and for many that will be enough, that will be fine. Just having the production being that good and having quite a simple idea. Uh, but yeah, for me, I think it could have maybe pushed a bit further, either emotionally or with the idea itself, just having a few more sounds as it went on, which he's very good at, you know, just having a, a pretty uh, standard foundation of an idea and then, you know, uh, developing it and mutating it, evolving it as it goes on into the second half and whatnot. Uh, but yeah, just uh, just a bit bereft, I think, here of something special on any front when it came to the heaviness and then the other sections just being fine. Uh, but yeah, again, if you're looking for amazing production, you're going to get that there with him, as always, in the arrangement. Very good. But just lacking a, a spark, I think, you know, just to me feeling a bit ordinary and like it could have pushed a little bit further. Uh, but yeah, that would be my thoughts on uh, that one. Next up, we have Sapphire and DRS with Holding On. warmth of that sound just kind of enveloping you like a blanket. Very comforting. Man, the percussion on this compilation is just... I can't go over it. I can't go over it. Yeah, that one for me having a lot of what the ones before it from Echo Brown and Alex Perez were missing, in my opinion. You know, another chilled, blissful, dreamy kind of DNB number here, but with a bit more of a motive to it and a better, more natural relationship between the vocal and the instrumental. And also, yeah, just having a bit more character to it, a bit more personality and like it just, well, it just felt a bit more sure and a bit more assured with its direction and where it was going. The lyrics were pretty good. I think it was DRS on the lyrics. Uh, could be wrong about that, but uh, yeah, pretty sure. Uh, but yeah, it was just a very together tune. And again, just had that real warmth beneath it with the instrumental. Again, just feeling like, like you're just being enveloped and kind of surrounded, engulfed in a warm blanket. Very comforting and I enjoyed that a lot. Emotionally as well, on that note, it just has uh, a lot more, like a lot more depth to it I would say than the ones that came before it and are going for a similar kind of style quite long but never felt to me like it was going on for too long that combination and relationship between the vocal and the instrumental just being organic and authentic enough uh, to really hold its own and have its place in the tune that was good stuff they are from Sapphire and DRS I enjoyed good stuff after that we have have on me by foreign concept Let this be a lesson, by the way, as well, in how to move to drum and bass music. You know, a lot of people think you have to move with the quickness of it, but really it's just a simple bop, like... Again, that soundscape kind of vibe just really washing over you, really feeling like it's got a proper scope to it. Oh, God, yeah, loving that. If you're one for wanting to get lost in a tune, we've had that before on this compilation already, but it feels particularly kind of pertinent with this one, you know, just really letting it wash over you and getting lost in it. Yeah, I mean, sumptuous, gorgeous, bloody hell, the production again. I think quite simply there, if you're one for enjoying getting lost in a specific piece of music, then yeah, that one you're going to like a lot, you know, not the most special ideas, not really doing that much, but it's just a continuous flow and, 
yeah, just big wave essentially of dreamy, blissful sound. And we also got some, well, not some, but the whole thing is just immaculately produced. And uh, beyond that, really enjoying that little vocal sample that we got running through the whole thing. You have on me, you have on me. Yeah, very good. Very effective in keeping you locked in, keeping you engaged with that tune. Because yeah, it is, uh, it is kind of dreamy and blissful to the point where it becomes a little bit hypnotic and you can kind of get lost in it uh, to the point where you just feel like you're entranced and you can't escape with that first listen I thought. Maybe could have had just a few more touches as it went on in that second half just to make it that little bit more engaging beyond the vocal sample that we get. But yeah, I mean, ultimately again, if you are one to just enjoy sitting back and relaxing, hearing a very soothing, extremely well-produced drum and bass number, then that is what you're gonna get there and you are gonna be happy. So uh, yeah, that would be my thoughts on that one from Foreign Concept. Next one, let go. And the next one is Do Me No Good by Nympho. Yeah. Nice groove to that actually, the bass line, I feel myself kind of grooving along with it. Mm. Mm, okay, like so sweet that it kind of pierces your heart with love, that kind of thing. The vocal. One of my favorites so far on the compilation for sure. Yeah, again, quite simple so far with the ideas, um, you know, not doing that much on the invention front, but production really pulling through. Again, a bit of a dreamy quality to it with the musicality and the vocal sample. That is for me, one of my picks so far on the compilation. Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. Yeah, another very good example there of super simple but super effective. Uh, yeah, just having a particular idea, running with it, not venturing too far from it, if at all, from what I remember. And the production being very whole and full and rounded and uh, great on that front overall. And the vocal just mixing in and kind of intertwining with that main idea very well. And, you know, just really honing in on that relationship again between the vocal and the instrumental, just having that really warm, comforting sound, not doing all that much, bada bing, bada boom, you know, kind of, Bob's your uncle, Fanny's your aunt, that kind of thing, just extremely to the point with what it's going for, basically. Not fucking around or faffing about in any way. And, you know, sometimes that can be, uh, that can be to its detriment, you know, not venturing at all, not developing an idea, not branching it out or anything like that. But here, with all the elements kind of working together so well, with the vocal sample being as good as it is, with the production being as solid and kind of full, rounded again as it is. Yeah, I mean, that's all you need, really. Yeah, that was good, simple, very effective, and uh, just showing all of its elements off in a very good way. Very cohesive and coherent. Liking that one, one of my picks so far. Great stuff. Following that, we have another from Visages, this one being called Serious. Okay, uh, let's go. Going back down the dark route in this compilation. Liking that. Feeling that. <laughs> Visages again, man, just coming through with the fucking sauce, my god. Oi, 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 come on, come on, come on. Oh, just dipping into that DB casually, no problem, no problem. Simple as, mate. Oh, my god, stop it, fuck off. I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. Honestly. Who do you think you are? Absolutely loving the flow of that, the tribal feel, the angling and kind of dynamic between all the sounds we get there in that heaviness, the dark feel of it, the underground kind of essence 
radiating off it. Fucking hell, it's good. And all the while the production just being that good. Do you know what I mean? Like complete package material right here. Oh my God, man. The bite, the menace, just lying beneath that, propping it up, giving it that evil, that sinister delivery. I think if it could have had one more thing just to push it up that little bit further, that little bit extra, just maybe prop it up just at that one extra notch, then it would have been maybe a little breakdown, like a doom doo 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 with the tribal feel, but just maybe a deep dub or rid of me or just original dubstep breakdown. But I mean, that's me just kind of nitpicking and uh, wishing for something a little bit extra when it wasn't necessarily needed. Just something that kind of came to mind, but, well, not but, but because what we get here is just pretty much flawless, immaculate, front to back. Loving this kind of genre and directional change for the compilation. A bit of a tribal uh, kind of vibe that we're getting here, very primal as well. At a moment when, yeah, I think maybe the blissful, dreamy D&B approach was maybe getting a little bit too much, maybe going a little bit overboard and was in need, I think, of being broken up at that point in the collection. And I don't think it could have been broken up in a better way, if I'm being honest. Two absolute bangers on a 12-track compilation. Yeah, fucking good stuff. And ultimately, we have Alex Perez again and Monty with Untitled Malware. This is gonna be good. I can feel it lurking, man. Again, just bubbling away below. Maybe a darker D&B kind of number here. Why is that so perfect? Just that. Oh, those little tricksy, intricate bits just firing out. Fuck, shit, shit. I have to say, it got to a point maybe a few tracks ago where I was like, you know, I'd really love maybe some darker, more evil sounding DB at some point in the compilation. And my god, like, that is delivering in pretty much every way that I was looking for and wanting. Oh! <laughs> oh. Back into the intricate stuff. For what they're going for, the effect that they want it to have is had and reached Perfectly. There's no better way of doing that, in my opinion. For me, that one, for what it is, for what it's going for, just excels in every single way. You know, we've had that with a couple of others before in this compilation, but that one in particular, it's just, it's just so, so compelling for what it's going for. Having that specific idea, executing it perfectly from the drawn out introduction that felt a bit nervy, a bit eerie, a bit creepy. And you know, me anyway, I don't know about you, you know, when you hear it here, when you hear it in full yourselves, but I wasn't entirely sure what direction it was gonna go off in. And it was only just in the build where I was like, fuck yeah, I'm completely sure that this is gonna be Alex Perez and Monty in combination in their darkest kind of form. And much needed as well at this point in the compilation. Production, the sounds that we get, those woo, 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 just so voluptuous, so warm, really propping up the track and uh, the pace of it, very frenetic. Then the way it develops with those more tricksy and intricate moments, those bits of percussion, just cat, 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 cat. Yeah, perfect on that front. And uh, yeah, the little interlude moments we got as well, uh, just toning it back down, giving it a moment of respite, building it back up, making it even more evil and naughty with the repetition from that first drop into the second. Maybe could have added a little bit more in that second drop just to unleash the idea in maybe a different way, but don't think it really needed it. Again, that would just be a thing of being a bit pernickety and uh, it takes every box and it does everything that it should do for the idea, for the style, the aesthetic that it's going for. Um, so yeah, you know, they've collabed before and it's been incredible. And this would be another fantastic example and outlay of Alex Perez and Monty. But now we move on to the final cut and another very big name 
EEPROM with Dangerous Sound. Okay, this one again could be fucking good. But uh, yeah, let's wait and see, shall we? The closer here on Atlas 1, Dangerous Sound by EEPROM. Lego. Mile and away the shortest number here, has to be said. Under three minutes long. Okay, okay. Oh. oh, that is mean. Oh, my God. Fucking layering the sound choice. Oh, wait, what? Oh, my God, the tempo change. Ooh. Oh. Oy. oh, my God. Yeah, that for me is just EEPROM in full flow, the vocal samples, the grizzly, just bite lying underneath, and the jagged uh, sounds very industrial, very mechanical, and the little catchy moments as well that we got. Uh, for one, the vocal sample, which I just touched on, but then that do do that kind of jagged, interjecting sound that we got uh, throughout the heaviness air, uh, kind of dwindled, you know, in that regard as it went on, I think. Uh, much more prominent that sound, that kind of catchy little motif in the first half. But then in the second half, it just got a lot more kind of contorted and twisted. And that's the concept that kind of shone through as it went on in that second half over time. The amount that's going on there, the amount of sounds kind of brought in, the amount that's being tackled with that style, that genre and kind of stylistically, if you will. Yeah, it just all coheres and is brought together in such an effective way. Again, you know, never, never really felt like there was anything here that fell out of place or um, just it didn't make sense in the track overall, in the overall concept. Uh, so, yeah, it's just another masterful uh, concoction, if you will, from EEPROM. Haven't been that enthralled by his material of late, but that one is just... Uh, yeah, blowing all of that stuff completely out the water and is one that I'm going to be going back to quite a lot. Just an incredible industrial mesh of mechanical sounds and just properly contorted and twisted synths and effects that just make for such a dystopian sounding tune. And yeah, it really is him in full flow with those vocal samples as well. Just dropped in, woven in. Another tune here that I'm finding quite difficult to fault, uh, if I'm being honest. So yeah, a very powerful and impactful ending there to Atlas 1. Me, 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 me. Which for me anyway, absolutely soars to the top as one of the very best compilations of the year so far for me in 2021 in bass music, no doubt. No qualms at all in saying that. Yeah, I mean, I can't off the top of my head think of another compilation that I've enjoyed that much. The production quality is so good that I had to turn the volume down from what I have it uh, usually when I'm doing these videos, these live reviews. There isn't one tune here of the 12 that I'm like, oh yeah, the production quality, you know, wasn't that great, you know, could have maybe been enhanced a bit on that front. No, you know, every single tune here, all 12, the production is pretty much immaculate, you know, front to back. In each of those numbers, there isn't really a moment where I was like, yeah, that just doesn't sound very good. Need to maybe tweak that a bit, make it a bit better. That is the key to a great compilation is just consistent quality in whatever way it may be, whether it's production or ideas or a particular story kind of woven through the whole thing. And it's not as if it is just production quality that is kind of bringing this compilation through. A lot of the ideas are fucking fantastic. I would say well over half of me are really, really good. And yeah, we really get that here in abundance. Just good ideas and good combinations of idea and production and a sense of story to a lot of them as well. So just excelling really Atlas One on many, many fronts. I think there was maybe a point where maybe two thirds or half to two thirds of the way through where there was a bit too much of the same kind of tune, that dreamy, blissful, 
kind of ethereal DMB approach, a bit liquidy. And I think it maybe gets a bit much when that could have potentially been broken up just a little bit with uh, some of the darker stuff that we get in the final two or three. On the other hand, you can look at it in the sense of uh, if that uh, lighter DNB approach was broken up and we got one light DNB tune, you know, one dreamy kind of number, then a darker one, then a lighter one again, and kind of back and forth. That would have felt a bit weird and indecisive for the compilation overall. So, I mean, yeah, that's just another way of looking at it that I don't think would have quite worked. Even the songs that I think don't do quite that much with their ideas and feel a bit inactive come through with some of the best production that I've heard in bass music overall in general in 2021. So yeah, at least in that one way on the production front, it is fantastic front to back. And I don't think I can say that for any other compilation that I've heard all year. On that note, on that level of goodness, I'm just gonna mention my favorites here. They would come from Deft, Drone, Visages times two, Nympho, Alex Perez and Monty, and then the EEPROM at the end. I'm taken aback, what a compilation, Atlas one and just again leaving me excited for more to come from 1985 music as always. Alex Perez with the, uh, the track list, the producers you brought together here, excelling, fantastic, top marks on that front and uh, yeah 1985 again just blowing the rest of the competition out of the water, so good, love it. But yeah there we have it, my word what a compilation, what a collection was so looking forward to it and it delivered for me in many, many ways. That was Atlas One from 1985 Music. But yeah, now I want to hear from you guys. What did you guys make of it? Which tracks of the 12 are your picks, having heard it here? Or if you've, you know, gone back to it yourselves and heard it on your headphones, your speakers, by yourselves, the tracks in full, whatever. But yeah, drop all of your views, thoughts, and opinions in the comment section down below. Beyond that, subscribe if you're yet to, hit the bell along the way, and all of the necessary links are down below. You got your Patreon, your Twitch, your social media accounts, everything associated with it. Naughty Step is down below. Go and check them out. But yeah, hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for tuning in, and I shall see all of you in the next one. Keep it naughty, and peace. <laughs>